In the manufacturing industry, lockout tagout is crucial to the safety of employees. We have seen a number of amputation, laceration, and other injuries that could have been avoided had proper protocol been in place and followed. But how do we get ahead of it? Well, Panasonic, in partnership with Toyota Motor, has developed the Finger Dummy, a new evaluation tool to keep fingers safe and hands whole. The Laceration Evaluation Finger Dummy, just a no-brainer of a product name, was officially launched in October 2021, commercialized through Tannic. Panasonic and Toyota outsource the manufacturing and sales to speed time to market. The companies expect that the dummy will be popular, particularly in manufacturing, where they expect to see a rise in automation, especially in collaborative robots or cobots. The fake finger has a simple design, an ABS resin handle with a stainless steel core to mimic bone that is surrounded by a replaceable proprietary soft material that mimics skin. Part of the reasoning behind the product's development is the increasing reliance on automation, though they are a bit more cryptic about it. Quote, the use of robots is expanding in the industrial world due to labor shortages brought on by the declining birth rate and aging population. Oh, sometimes it hurts to hear the truth. The joint development started in 2018, focusing on improving finger safety on the shop floor. The finger was based off of an in-house Panasonic technology the company used for evaluating bodily safety when using its products. It was developed based on verification experiments performed on pig skin, which, is similar to human skin. They took Panasonic's tech, used Toyota's manufacturing know-how, and made a finger dummy they hope to be used to verify, improve, and validate safety conditions on the manufacturing floor. Using it is pretty straightforward. You stick the fake finger between machine surfaces and see what happens. Well, given the low birth rates we just talked about, how about Android Kids? Researchers from the Riken Guardian Robot Project in Japan have created Nicola, an android child that conveys basic human emotions. Unlike the Russian outfit trying to buy your face, Nicola has rather convincing or at least more accurate expressions. It can show anger, disgust, fear, happiness, sadness, and surprise. Though happiness looks more like unease, and anger is just terrifying. Does he look meaner because he's bald? Rather than expressions, they refer to the movements as facial action units. In recent tests, the team manipulated the robotic muscles in Nicola's face to create each expression, which was verified by a facial action unit expert, which is a real thing. Now, while Nicola can express emotion, one remaining pitfall between human-machine harmony is getting AI to properly detect human emotions and respond adequately. But that's a challenge for another day. Nicola's face has 29 pneumatic actuators that control the artificial muscles. An additional six actuators control head and eyeball movement. All of the actuators are controlled by air, which makes the movements more smooth, more human. The emotions were verified not just by facial movement experts, but everyday people. The test wasn't perfect, but the researchers believe that's because Nicola's silicone skin doesn't wrinkle like a human boy's skin. Nicola is still just a head. But the Guardian Robot Project hopes to build an entire Android that can one day be used to help in healthcare applications, particularly the elderly or those who need assistance at home. I mean, I get that everything these days needs to be Tesla adjacent, but how did they not name this thing David? It just seems like a miss. Has no one seen AI? Also, families are definitely going to be raising these things in 10 years, right? Maybe sooner, maybe sooner. Von Mercier has created an electric sports hovercraft, and it all started with the imagination of a child. Founder Michael Mercier started his company driven to bring imagined vehicles to life. When he was a kid, he envisioned a better hovercraft, and he pursued a career in mechanical engineering and product development, which helped him design, build, and prototype the Arosa. Now, he plans to bring it to market. The Arosa uses air cushion hovering, riding on a cushion of air. Essentially, it's flying eight inches above the surface. The air cushion is suspended inside a flexible reinforced fabric skirt that helps compensate for changes in terrain and provides clearance over obstacles. The hovercraft is maneuverable using a patented directional control system that can move forward, lateral, and in reverse. The steering wheel governs the thrust fans for maneuverability. So, no brakes, but reverse thrust. 
According to Mercier, it's easy to stop and start or fly and drive. The futuristic design seats two in a cockpit or tandem style in an open air cabin, and it can carry a 400 pound payload. So gotta be a little choosy with who's going with you. The body is made of carbon fiber and metal alloys, and the craft has an electric powertrain with a high voltage battery pack powering three independent electric motors. The company has a gallery with a lot of photos, none of it moving. There is one video, but the camera just sweeps around the hovercraft. However, the team is currently working on a video of it in action, and we should hopefully see it within the next two weeks. Which I know what you're thinking, I probably should have put a pin in this story for two weeks, but I had to run with it now. I don't know the rules for hovercraft, but apparently you register the Arosa as a boat. But there is a possibility that it could one day be street legal. It tops out at 50 miles per hour on water with a cruising speed of 30 miles per hour. And the company says it can stand up to a little chop while on the water. The Arosa starts at $100,000 and you can reserve up to two for $1,000 each right now, but be mindful as that reservation is non-refundable after 30 days. The company recently bought a warehouse on the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland, which will serve as the assembly and production facility, as well as an eventual showroom. The prototype has been tested indoors, as well as on water, land, and snow. And while the prototype is red, the production model is gonna be blue. One problem, it's gonna be hard to get serviced as Van Mercier is the only company that can do the job right now, though, they're working on expanding that network. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design.